what language shall I select for this fine game? English, French or German? I did actually do French and German at school, but I wasn't very good at either. So we're going to pick English. Boring, I know. Hello, people of the internet. This is Shaky Jake, and I really need a catchphrase. You are watching Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on the PlayStation. One of many versions of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone as a game. There are literally five or six different versions. Let me just double check the options whilst I'm here. All of this looks fine to me. Uh, I do like that Harry Harry's scar is the... Uh, volume thing there. Uh, we'll leave it on stereo, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I have a lot of fun memories of this game. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination. If I played this today, I'd probably think it was absolutely crap. But I grew up playing this game as one of several games that I spent a happy childhood with. And if I remember correctly, can I actually activate the lightning? I think it's with triangle. Yeah, I can. If you press triangle, you can actually activate the uh, lightning every so often. Okay, so we're looking at a main menu right now that's actually very drab for a Harry Potter game. Apart from these three owls cluelessly flying around. I mean, if these owls are meant to deliver post, they're terrible at their jobs. Have a shock for that. So these owls are just flying around, hooting endlessly, and I think they're very confused. So let's just start the game. And yes, this did come out in 2001, the same time as the film adaption came out. And I am a big Harry Potter fan. I am not going to lie to you. I do like the Harry Potter books. I am a big fan. I, um, I've read every book apart from The Order of the Phoenix because that book was just insanely long. I have experienced it all because I have the Stephen Fry audiobooks because that was how I started with the Harry Potter universe. I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. But this is the Harry Potter game. Um, I'm just going to let this game tell the story. So, yes, I would like to create a slot... And I thought it froze then. That was a bit scary. It might be a bit slow. Okay, so we can go for one of these three slots. I'm just going to go for the first one because I'm boring. And yes, this game does try and explain the plot of the first Harry Potter book. Kind of does it okay-ish, just not as detailed as J.K. Rowling's book. There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. As unsuspecting muggles slept, a huge motorbike with a giant astride it tumbled down from the darkness. What's a muggle? The giant, named Hagrid, left a blanket-wrapped bundle on the doorstep of number four, Privet Drive. Nestled in the bundle was a baby, Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Who? Hey. For the next 11 years, Harry lived with his dreadful step-parents, the Dursleys. Aunt and uncle. Until that fateful day, when he received the letter inviting him to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hagrid took Harry to Diagon Alley to purchase a most unusual list of school supplies. Soon after, Harry caught the Hogwarts Express from Platform 9 and 3 quarters and left the Muggle world far behind. Harry sat beneath the sorting hat, hoping that he would not be chosen for Slytherin House over Gryffindor. Not Slytherin, eh? said the hat in his ear. You could be great. It's all here in your head, and Slytherin will help you on your way to greatness. No? Well, if you're sure, better be... Gryffindor! So that's the first few chapters of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone condensed into a one or two minute cutscene. Okay, yeah, there are some sound glitches, unfortunately. That's because of the emulator I'm using. <laughs> so certain 
sounds will be distorted and destroyed. Um, well, certain scores will be destroyed, I should say. Certain musical cues. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. Now, Hogwarts... Haven't you just told us all this in the Great Hall? So, search behind every door. But keep in mind, not all secrets are rewarding. Oh, um, which reminds me, uh, the third floor corridor is out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to suffer a most painful death. Look, Dumbledore, you just told us all this in the Great Hall. Why are you repeating it to me again? Um, <laughs> this game, before I go any further, this game is incredibly unintentionally hilarious as an adult. I never noticed it as a kid, but playing it again now, it's ridiculously funny. So, Nitwit, oh. blubber, oddment, tweak, four wonderful words, don't you think? Oh yeah, that's my life mantra, dude. I say that literally every day. Nitwit, blubber, oddment, tweak. Yeah, or whatever you just said. I can't actually remember what you said at the last word. But this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's aged badly. <laughs> and I'm being genuinely serious there. It hasn't aged very well whatsoever in terms of controls, gameplay, graphics, the engine it's using, various things. It hasn't aged well at all. Me and Dumbledore are just standing here looking incredibly awkward and pondering if we're ever going to move on with our lives so let's do that and we can't leave hogwarts yet for obvious reasons we can't go in the great hall for obvious reasons because we've just had dinner in there and dumbledore's done his usual thing and we've had the sorting and everything we can go in the portrait room but we're not going to go in there just yet oh hello oh there's some actual flags i don't think i ever noticed those before we can't go to the broom cupboard i don't think you can actually go in here whatsoever throughout the entire game <laughs> i could be wrong and the dungeon which is locked these areas will all apart from the broom cupboard as far as i can remember all of these areas will open up as we progress through the game because this is very weird in the way it's structured it's kind of sandboxy but at the same time it's incredibly linear so you have to follow the game structure otherwise you can't play it basically now, some areas in this game actually look incredibly nice, such as this window pane thing here. I'm not very good with uh, architecture in castles. So, we can't go in the great foyer yet. And this game is hilarious for a number of reasons, which I'm going to go into shortly. But I have fun memories of this game because I had it as a late Christmas present in... 2001 yeah it would have been 2001 as of when this game was released and when i was a kid and my grandparents were still alive at the time we used to have new year's eve presents i know it's, it sounds incredibly weird because really it's just a christmas present that's been delayed and given to us on new year's eve and me and all my relatives used to have one new year's eve present and for Christmas 2001, or New Year's Eve 2001, I should say, I received Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on the PlayStation. And I enjoyed it immensely. I had a lot of fun with it. I was a big Harry Potter fan. I'd read the first three books at the time. I'd watched the first film. And I enjoyed the first film. And I had this game as a New Year's Eve present. And I adored it. And I played it a lot. I actually struggled with it quite a bit as well. And considering I was nine years old at the time, that's saying something because this game is incredibly patronising in some cases. So if we go down here, can we actually climb up here? Yes, we can. Can we slide down it? Oh, we can. Okay. Now, the jumping is another thing I'll explain later because you can't jump in this game despite what I just did. And we'll see why in a few minutes. So, hello. By the look of that scar, you must be Harry Potter. I'm Fred Weasley, and this is my brother, George. Hello there, Harry. We have a proposal for you. In Hogwarts, there are special portraits, and behind these special portraits are prizes. But of course, not just anyone can open up the portraits. You need to know the password. If you bring us earwax every flavour beans, we'll tell you the password. 
will be in the Gryffindor common room, which is through the portrait of the fat lady. See you around, Harry. See, Fred and George don't make this clear. I've just realised when they said they're going to give us, they're going to give me the password to to enter a portrait. Do they mean literally to get into the Gryffindor common room? Because that's evil, man. You don't do that. Although that being said, um, <laughs> we we are we were given it in the Great Hall, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate something. A moment. Notice these bookcases, and notice how some of them are incredibly fat, like this one. And then some of them are incredibly thin, like this one down here. I don't know if the game will let me go through this yet, but with the thin ones, you can actually go through them if you press square. So we're going to do that. And in here is this. The first hidden item in the game. Merlin. Yeah, Merlin, nice guy. Know him quite a bit, actually. Uh, so we can view his card, which I've forgotten the name of. I'm a Harry Potter fan. I've forgotten the name of the the cards you pick up. They have a name, don't they? How have I forgotten? Merlin, medieval, dates unknown, most famous wizard of all time, sometimes known as Prince of the Enchanters part of the court of King Arthur. Wow, most famous wizard of all time. Yeah, he was stuck behind a random bookcase in Hogwarts for anybody to pick up. Okay. I literally have forgotten the name of the cards that, you know, the Harry Potter universe has. Um, I can't believe I've forgotten. Oh yeah, and we're back in here, so we have to pretty much go out of here so if you've forgotten how to access these bookcases you're screwed at this point so can i leave now it would be nice if i could go there we go i was pressing the wrong button how stupid of me and uh yeah here we are we're back in the chocolate frog cards there we go i've just remembered it chocolate frog cards dear me um the cards you get in a chocolate frog right so we're going to encounter the first bit of actual gameplay in this game, apart from that bit I just did. So let's go to the Charms Corridor. And we've got some ghosts. Can we run through them? We can. Oh yeah, and the sound's destroyed here slightly. Hey Harry, remember me, Ron Weasley? That slimy slither in Draco Malfoy ran through this door with an owl under his arm. I think it was your owl Hedwig. Let's go after him. How on earth do you run with an owl under your arm? I mean... Owls don't like that. They they literally peck you and fly away. I don't know how you can hold an owl under your arm for that long without injury. Come on, Harry. Let's find Hedwig. Well, well, well. If it isn't the famous Harry Potter. I'm Draco Malfoy, and you do well to show me respect. Looking for that owl of yours? How careless of you to leave it lying about. Go home to your mother, Potter. Oh, sorry, you don't have one, do you? Oh, bloody hell, that was savage. Jesus Christ. Malfoy, you a, you a prick. Jesus Christ, right. You're so lucky you have both of your parents right now. Seriously, and we're trapped in here. We're, we're literally trapped in here until we get Hedwig. So, yeah, Malfoy, you're, you're a prick. Can we talk to you again? No, we can't. Fine, okay. Let's just carry on then and... This looks a bit like William Shakespeare, so just something I'd thought to comment on there. He's a nasty piece of work. Just ignore him. Us Gryffindor should stick together. Yeah, the dude slated my dead mum. I should punch him in the face for that. Come on, Harry, follow me. To climb up, just push forwards on your controller. Oh, and that's one thing I really hate about games. When they, uh... I'm going to pause here, actually. That's one thing I hate about particularly old games i say old because these games were new when i was a kid i hate it when the tutorials explain the controls to you in universe so as one just did there he basically said to climb up on objects push forwards on your controller it's like who says that in real life if i said to somebody i knew i'll press x to open a door they'd look at me funny and basically tell me to get my head sorted okay so Oh, and on the pause screen as well, you can see there are 17 chocolate frog cards. There's how many points you currently have for Gryffindor. 
and how many Bertie Bots Heavy Flavor Beans you've collected for different colors for Fred and George, because this game does have side quests. It does try and flesh itself out quite well. And as you can see, it hasn't aged very well. The character models are rough. The environments are rough. The uh, the animations are a bit stilted at times. But overall, it's a fun game. And that's why I'm playing it. Because I want lots of unintentional hilarity from this. And see how it holds up. Let's go. I thought that's what we were doing, Ron. I thought we were literally trying to find Hedwig. And yeah, every time you jump... Every time you leave a surface, you automatically jump. It's very weird. Follow me. I've just been doing that. <laughs> to jump, just approach the edge and keep pressing forwards on the controller. And there you go. The game basically takes away the option to jump because it does it for you. And I think that's incredibly patronising. I think this game was intended for very young people who had never played a game before. At this point in my life when this game came out, I'd played a number of games. So even then I thought it was a little bit weird that I had to let the game decide how to jump for me. And I'm trying to decide if these portraits look like anybody. This looks a bit like Frank Skinner in a way. I don't know, maybe it's just me. And I swear this look, maybe David Tennant. We'll go with that. It looks like David Tennant, but with a different hairdo. And then this guy looks a little bit like Krill, actually, towards the end of the Philosopher's Stone. And that's the other thing this game does. It literally assumes you know about the Harry Potter universe already. So it talks about things like Hogwarts, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Diagon Alley, and various things that everyone who's read a Harry Potter book will know. But if you've never encountered the series before, you'll be like, what the hell is the narrator talking about? And I've just realised, I'm just going to jump down a sec, because I want to look at these walls a little bit more. These are actually some nice textures I never paid attention to before. And it's a shame I can't look up, because that looks genuinely interesting. Okay, so... You can't really fail this. This is relatively straightforward. So all you got to do is pick up Hedwig's, Hedwig's feathers and jump to Ron. Hello, Ron. Look, there's another feather. I'll double back and watch the entrance. You'd better go on and rescue Hedwig. <laughs> double check the entrance as if this is some kind of heist. Okay, let's do what he says then. Now, if I remember correctly, this game was developed by Argonaut Games, or however you pronounce them. I believe it's Argonaut Games, after Jason and the Argonauts. I, like, I used to say astronauts when I was a kid. I used to say Jason and the astronauts, and my parents would look at me and be like, what the hell are you talking about? That's what they were thinking. They didn't obviously say that. But it's actually Jason and the Argonauts, which I still haven't seen. I need to watch that at some point. I think we've got the DVD line around somewhere. So let's get these feathers, which are blue for some reason. Hedwig's white, but she's got blue feathers. Whatever. And there we go. Door automatically opens because we picked up enough feathers. Okay, so let's go through the door. And I think we get taught a new gameplay mechanic here. Hello, Harry Potter. My name is Nearly Headless Nick, and I am the Gryffindor House Ghost. Hello. God, look how tall this room is. Well, I mean, you must go all the way to the top to get out. If you want to look around, press your triangle button. Press the triangle button again when you've finished. That was the sound of my childhood, or part of my childhood. That was the reason why I was quiet, because this game's soundtrack means as much to me as John Williams' score for the Harry Potter films means to a whole bunch of people. And the soundtrack for this game, and I believe the Chamber of Secrets game as well, was composed by Jeremy Soule who went on to compose soundtracks for such games as Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which I've played on this channel, and a little-known game called The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And Jeremy Soule really captured the sound of the Harry Potter universe, at least for me personally. And 
as an alternative sound to the Harry Potter world, it really sells it to me. In some ways, I prefer it to the film soundtracks because it feels more what I would expect from Harry Potter. And if you listen to Jeremy Soule's soundtrack on YouTube, for example, it is absolutely fantastic, stripped away from this game. It's if I was if I was pushed, I would say the soundtrack is literally the best thing about this game, and it still is the best thing about this game. Now I'm still trying to work out if any of these portraits look like anybody. I can't think of anyone for this at the moment, so we'll leave that. Uh, this looks a bit like Alan Rickman combined with Stephen Fry, bizarrely. And if we carry on up. Oh, this next portrait. Uh, this looks a little bit like Martin Freeman when he was in The Hobbit. So that's pretty cool because this game was made before then. Um, this one is my favourite portrait because I believe this is Alan Davis from Jonathan Creek and QI. I literally believe that. And I only realised that when I got older. But I'm pretty convinced this is Alan Davis. Oh, and if you fall from here, you'll lose health. And your health is indicated by the lightning bolt scar on the top left hand corner this looks a bit like the queen from black adder so uh, yeah some i'm sure these are just weird unintentional things i'm not meant to notice but whatever and these chocolate frogs are your health they help restore health so i picked that up for no reason whatsoever and there we go um these two top bits serve no purpose whatsoever so let's go to the jinx rooms where we definitely learn a new gameplay mechanic and certain areas need to reload i'm not quite sure why because they're the same assets pretty much but whatever we'll roll with it ah some snails have escaped from a care of magical creatures class careful they are dreadfully poisonous Press the cross button to cast the flipendo knockback jinx from your wand that should stop the wretched things and watch out for those poisonous snail trails. Yeah, remember in the Harry Potter books where he, Harry learnt how to use magic from Nearly Headless Nick? Because I definitely remember that bit. It was my favourite bit in the entire first book. So if you hold it down and release, you cast the spell and I completely missed because I'm an idiot. So let's try that again. And the snail is now deceased. Some people are convinced that Harry says Nintendo when he does that spell. And I can kind of see why, because it does kind of sound a bit like it. But he doesn't. He says Flipendo, because that's the spell. I don't even know if that's a spell in the books. I don't think it is. I think Flipendo was just invented for this game, because it's definitely not in the books. And I don't think it's in the films. So, pick up a feather. Uh, do these guys look like anybody? This looks like somebody who tried to join UB40 and didn't for whatever reason you can use your L2 and R2 buttons to rotate the game camera thank you very much that's actually genuinely useful um, this guy I don't know who that looks like sorry I'm gonna have to skip that one and I missed well done let's try that again I'm still missing come back there we go. So I've killed some classroom materials, so well done me. And there we go. The first part of the game is pretty turgid, I will admit. Uh, oh no, he's not here. Okay. I don't think I can say who these portraits look like. He looks overly happy though. I'll give him that. What does this book have to say? Press the triangle button to view your surroundings. Yeah, we... You can also cast a flipendo knockback jinx from this view. See what you can find to flipendo in this room. That sounds a little cheeky when you put it that way. Ugh, see what you can find to flipendo in this room. These portraits. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry VIII. Uh, a vampire. Brian Blessed. Hello again. Did you notice that those poisonous snails twinkle? I wanted to see who the last portrait Things was. The twinkle can be affected by a flipendo knockback jinx. This is a jinx block. Your flipendo knockback jinx will move it aside. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. Remove the jinx block. Cast flipendo at it. All right, we'll do that then. 
love. I do love how this game also gives you house points for doing incredibly monotonous things and things that you shouldn't have to do as an 11 year old kid. See, there we go, we've already got 20 house points just for doing sod all, basically. And, uh, yeah, I don't know who that portrait looks like. Uh, let's have a look at the others. Edmund Blackadder from uh, Blackadder. Not sure with that one. And somebody who was trying to cosplay as the 10th Doctor from Doctor Who before David Tennant was ever cast. So... Although he looks a bit like a rat, I will say that. This person here looks a little bit like a rat. He's got rat-like features. So, let's climb up here. And that is a ginormous rat, Jesus Christ. Let's kill you. Or just send you away. So, this is a secret I wasn't actually aware of for quite a while. If we jump over here, and then jump here. We can get a chocolate frog. I'm not quite sure why we need that, but we can get it anyway. And you have limited control over your jumps. You can kind of slow them down, but for the most part, you don't have any control over them. And yeah, because of the emulator I'm using for my game, it does... There are sound glitches, unfortunately, with the music occasionally, and I'm not quite sure how to fix that. Ooh, an ominous figure. Now, when I was a kid, I'll explain a story about that. I was convinced that was Draco Malfoy. Do not ask me why. I was convinced that was Malfoy wearing that robe, even though it clearly isn't. But anyway, moving on. Well, you've made it this far. Now take a look at this. Bloody hell, that's so patronising. Tall <laughs> jinx blocks like this one needs a charged flipendo knockback jinx to move it. Oh, you made it this far, have you? <laughs> to cast a charged knockback jinx. Hold down the cross button to build up the spell before releasing it. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, you made it this far, have you? We weren't expecting anyone to get to this stage of the game already. Oh, it's so unintentionally hilarious, this game. And it just keeps on giving. It's great. So, yeah. Headrig is very close now, I believe. Um, we're not too far off. Oh, there is another secret over here. I'm not quite sure how you're meant to get to that bit, but there's a chocolate frog over there. I'm not quite sure how you get to it, but there's a chocolate frog. So let's just destroy the cobwebs, get some house points, and then we can get out of this room as well. This game does like to teach you a lot. It likes to teach you a lot of things, and it's usually the same I'm thing. Long bottom. Malfoy led me down here and then ran through a secret passage with an owl. Now I'm trapped by these enchanted books. I've lost my wand, so I can't knock the books out of the way with Flipendo. Use the R1 button to point your wand at the flying books, then use your cross button to cast. Oh, Neville, you were so terrible in the early Harry Potter stories. Anyway, so we'll take his advice. We can manually aim at these things. I don't really use this because I don't think it's that good, but we'll try it anyway. There we go, there's one. Oh, we hit it good. Can I flipendo Neville? Yeah, I can. He doesn't really care, though. And, uh, come on. You can make a first person shooter out of this. You could call it a wand person shooter. The lever is around here somewhere. There! I found it! God, why, why doesn't it just use magic like the rest of this place? I don't think there's any secrets around here, but I'll just double check. Can we climb on the books? We can. How enchanting. Oh, the magic puns. I'm, uh, I only just realised. These portraits... Dawn French, maybe? Uh, I should note Jasper Carrot with a dodgy goatee. Let's double check these two before we go. Not sure, but cool hair. Naomi Harris, if that's the name I'm thinking of. Uh, the new 
money penny from the Daniel Craig James Bond films. I'm gonna just say Naomi Harris. I hope it's Naomi Harris. Otherwise, I'm I'm an idiot. I w I'm gonna double check that. And that was a bit of an odd loading screen then. And there's Hedwig, all trapped. That's really unjustified. And yeah, it is Naomi Harris, so just double checked. So I'm not completely stupid. Okay, so let's talk to Neville. A charge for Pendo nut breakings might free Hegwood from those bars. Keep the cross button held down to cast one. Oh yeah, that's the other thing this game does. It says X as cross. <laughs> I've never heard any other game called the X button cross. <laughs> At least not in my memory. So, yeah, we have to... Oh, we don't even need to do a charge one. We can just release her. With just a normal attack. Fine, that works for me. So Hedrick flies around and then she flies off and doesn't even thank us for rescuing her. And then we're released back into the Hogwarts community. So let's do that. Because we're probably late for lessons at this point. Harry's all chilled, just walking oh, along. I see you rescued Hedwig. She was eager to get out, so I opened the door for her. That'll teach Malfoy to mess with us. Hi, <laughs> I'm Neville. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm well, okay. Too. Harry helped me escape from some flapping books. Nice to meet you, Flapping books. Oh, the uh, puns. It's all right. You guys go ahead. I think I've lost my toad, Trevor. Come on, Harry. Let's go. You lost your toad again? God, you lost him like yesterday, didn't you, Neville? Oh, see, th this game, man. I can't believe like all this went over my head when I first played it. But it's so funny. Oh, and there's Hedrig. She's come back and given us a broom. Thank you very much, Hedrig. See you later. Don't think it's the Nimbus 2000, though. Wow! Hedwig brought you a broomstick! I'll show you where the flying lesson is. Follow me. Yeah, I mean, how did Hedwig even afford it? I mean, she can't exactly talk to anybody. So, you know. Um. Here's the doorway to the flying lesson. Watch yourself, Harry. I hear Madame Hooch is really strict. I'm still waiting for my broomstick. Our stupid owl is ancient. It's going to take forever. I'll wait for you here. Hey, Errol is awesome. I won't hear a bad word said against Errol. Okay, so this game is heavily scripted. I will point that out. I am Madam Hooch, your teacher. There is a no shit, obviously. <laughs> the <laughs> what else would you be? <laughs> using the directional buttons and press the I'm a volunteer who First, likes to teach people how to ride a broom. On my whistle, then. Okay, how do I ride a broom again? Oh yeah, it's X. Okay, good. So, these controls can be quite stiff, but we're going to see how well we do. And whilst we're doing this, just want to get this. And I completely miss because I'm an idiot. Let's try that again in a few minutes. Oh, we're actually running out of time. Quick, 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 quick. Excellent technique. Ten house points for getting them all. That was so close. The next test is a little harder, but there are bonus house points if you succeed. Fly through each magic hoop that appears. Remember, slow down to turn tighter. Ready, Potter? Slow down On to turn whistle, tighter. <laughs> Three, two, one. There's no brakes, unfortunately. Okay, so this gets progressively harder and the controls don't help, but we'll do our best, hopefully. Right. Yes, I got it good. Although it doesn't really matter because this game's quite generous with how many Bertie Bots every flavour beans it gives out. And yet, who'd have thought flying a broomstick would be so anticlimactic? And that sound Madam Hooch makes is hilarious. I'm going to fly past her again later just to prove a point. But she acts like we're driving like 60 miles per hour, even though we're probably only doing about, you know, Five, ten. Where's the... Oh, it's all the way around here. I don't think I'm going to make this, but we'll try. Come on. Quick. There's no boost. Well done, Potter. I shall award ten house points for that fine performance. Yeah, you better. Ready for a tougher challenge? There are bonus house points for a perfect score. As before, 
fly through each of the magic hoops. Concentrate now. On my whistle. Are you implying Three, I wasn't concentrating before? Two, How dare you? One. Now this one, I used to be alright at this when I was a kid, when I was literally playing this and nothing else at the time. But I don't think I can do this now, so we'll just, we'll see how it goes. Oh my god, so tight. Oh. <laughs> She's acting like we're driving 60, oh god. She's acting like we're driving 60 miles per hour when we're only doing about 5. Oh my god, these controls, come on. I was better at this as a kid. This is dreadful. Come on. I don't think we're going to do this. I've been fucking around too much. Oh, no. We're not going to do it. We are not. Give me a couple more seconds. Well done, Potter. Good score. Five more house points for Gryffindor. You have mastered the basics of broomstick control. Now run along. Yeah, I would have liked, you know, 10 house points, but whatever, that's fine. I'm, I'll get over it, I'm sure. Hi, Harry. Have you met Hermione yet? She's a real know-it-all and a teacher's pet. No, I am not. You are. Hello, Harry. Charms class is about to start. Isn't it exciting? She's rather annoying, isn't she? Bit harsh. You'll get married to her after the books are finished. That's your future girlfriend you're talking about. And yeah, Hermione's very weird in this game. She's always carrying a book. Which I understand why, because it's part of her character, but it seems a bit impractical holding a book for the entire game. Because how are you supposed to do magic with just one arm and do all the acrobatic stuff with just one arm? Imagine her trying to ride a broomstick with just one arm. Uh, we can save a game here, but we're not going to do that just yet. One thing this game does get correct though, and it's something that doesn't really get promoted enough, is it does get the atmosphere down incredibly well. It, it feels more ominous in a way than the films ever do. Oh no! I forgot in my spell book. I'll catch you up, Harry. You dickhead, you could have been getting that spell book whilst I was doing flying lessons. Come on, Ron. Oh, you actual idiot. Um, okay, who are you? Get to the charms class before the timer runs out. Walk through the floating clocks to start the timer. Who on earth are you meant to be? Like, which student are you meant to be? You're not Neville. You're clearly not Seamus Finnegan, because you're not Irish enough. You're not Dean Thomas, because you're not black enough. Who the hell are you meant to be? Oh, whatever. I'm going to assume you're from a different year entirely, but... What's wrong with your face? Jesus Christ. Let's move on then. Yeah, this is going to be my uh, off the cuff let's play. This is the one where I will rip into this game, but in a nice way because I do actually like it. I don't think it's a bad game. It's certainly not a great game, but it's a game that I like to rip into. So let's do this. And this is the first, or second I should say, the second of several timed activities that you have to do. And it also teaches you how to better perform the jumping. Because if you don't do it correctly, you can screw up quite easily here. Especially on this one. Like that. Let's try that again. Please jump. Thank you. Imagine if you had to get to like lectures every day like this. This would be annoying. I remember when I was at university a couple of years ago, and if I had to get to all my lectures like this, I'd have been, I'd have quit. It would have been terrible. And there we go. That's the puzzle done. You must be Harry Potter. Welcome to Charms class. You're just in time. I'm actually several Welcome, seconds ahead. Wizard. I am Professor Flitwick. And Ron's late though. Deduct some points off him. Wingardium Leviosa. Watch my one move and press the symbol button it points to. Complete each sequence three times to learn the spell Wingardium Leviosa. Now you try. Remember, press it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Ready. Yeah, that that doesn't make it into this game, unfortunately. That classic line of dialogue. That was good. Excellent. Oh, it wasn't that good. Calm down. Perfect. Superb. Keep up now. It's going to get harder. He's not lying. 
That was good. Excellent. And yeah, this will happen several Perfect. times throughout the game. This is how the game teaches you new gameplay mechanics. Well done. You've mastered Wingardium Leviosa. Potter, Granger and Weasley, follow me to see the Wingardium Leviosa spell put into practice. I thought we were just doing that, but whatever. Now, listen carefully. An object that can be charmed will be marked with a yellow sparkle. A charmed object can be levitated. Keep the cross button depressed if you want to change the <laughs> Keep keep the X button depressed. <laughs> oh Try my god. Glass onto its pedestal to open the door. Yes, keep the X button as sad as possible whilst you're doing regarding Leviosa. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll do that. X, are you ready to be depressed? No, not really. I just want to be happy. Well, tough. We're doing Wingardium Leviosa, so I'm going to keep you depressed for as long as possible. Wingardium Leviosa! Oh, and that's one of the few times Harry speaks in this game as well, because he's, he's otherwise mute. I'm not quite sure why, but he's mute. Well done! Five points to Gryffindor. Cheers, Flitwick. See you later. I'm assuming Ron and Hermione get extra tuition then and I just leave. Okay, whatever. So I think we get a little bit of freedom again now because those sections, these early sections are heavily scripted. But we're still going to be in a script. Harry, please meet me in the castle grounds. You can get to the castle grounds through the front door of the castle. Pop around no shit, obviously. How else would we get there? I have important to tell you. Your friend, Hagrid. Cheers, Hagrid. So, there we go. And what we can do from here is... Oh, we can go... Oh, we can go back in there. Of course we can. I forgot about that. We'll do that in a moment. I just want to double check. Is the charms class actually locked? It is. We literally can't learn any more charms. How harsh is that? And, yeah, we're going to do the flying thing again because you can get another... I think it's more house points. I don't think you can get a chocolate frog card. But, yeah, I think you can get some more house points here. So let's do that. We might as well. Ah, hello again, Potter. I see you've come back for more practice. I have a special No, the door was unlocked, so some I figured there'd be some in here. Some by moths escaped into the courtyard. If you're quick, you can catch them all. Okay. Like Pokemon? Potter. Awesome. Go! Why are you timing me for this? Like, seriously, why are you actually timing me for this? I'm just rescuing some butterfly-type things out of the goodness of my own heart, and you're still timing me. And Harry's grabbing them like a pro. I presume they're practice snitches at this point. Because what this game does do is it completely destroys the narrative of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It completely alters the order of when events happen and various other things. So stuff that happens very early on in the book and the film happens well done, towards the end and vice versa. You collected them all. Hagrid will be pleased. For such a service to the school, I shall award ten points to Gryffindor. A service to the school? She's acting as if, like, I've saved somebody's life. <laughs> Yes, a service to the school. You saved all of those butterfly creatures. So because of that, you have saved Hogwarts from going into administration or whatever. Or going into special measures, to use the educational term correctly. I should know better because I work in education. And, oh yeah, we can actually levitate this. Wingardium Leviosa. For no reason whatsoever other than tidying it up. And we get five house points just for doing that. That is absolutely hilarious. Um, I'm going to go in the common room just very quickly. Password? Caput Draconis. Which is the password from the book, so points to, for uh, authenticity there. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I said about this a while ago, because I completely lost my train of thought when I talked about Argonaut games. They were the same developers, if I remember correctly, who developed the Croc games. You know, Croc, Legend of the Gobbos, and Croc 2. And I actually have those games. I've not played them in years, but I do have them. And I almost completed the first Croc, and I never did. 
and then I never got anywhere in Croc 2 because it was so hard when I was a kid. But anyway, let's read the notices. Please keep the common room tidy. That's relatively straightforward. What else do you have to say? For sale, issues one to six of the adventures of Martin Miggs, the mad muggle. Three sickles each. Okay, anything else? Lost. One toad. If found, please return to Neville Longbottom. Potions. Lesson one. Don't forget a sloth brain. Out now. The Nimbus 2000. How many notices are on this thing? Please keep the common room tidy. Okay, that was it. I gotta say, I didn't think there was that many. Uh, there's the card book. Hello, Harry. Still haven't managed to collect the yellow earwax every flavour beans. Give us the beans, and we'll tell you the password to the portrait of the old posh baron. George and I have left something behind the portrait that you might find very handy. Okay. I mean, we are only on part one, lads. We we haven't really got anywhere yet. Uh, what's this? Gringotts break in latest. Investigations continue into the break-in at Gringotts. Rumoured to be the work of dark wizards. Shock Gringotts horror. goblins today insisted that nothing had been taken. The contents of the vault in question, which remain unidentified, had been withdrawn earlier that same day. Right. And we could pick up chocolate frogs for no reason, so let's leave that for now. When you drink a Wigan Wild potion, it replenishes all you have. Remarkable, isn't it? I'm just going to assume that's Lavender Brown because I literally have no clue who you are. And that's uh, that's one thing about this game that is incredibly hilarious. I only realised this the other week when I was looking at potentially playing this game again because I decided this as a spur of the moment thing. But this game literally only has 10 students in. You've got Harry, you've got Ron, you've got Hermione. So you've got the core trio, the golden trio, whatever they're classed as. So you've got them. You got Fred and George, that's five. You've got Neville, six. Malfoy, seven. Crab and Goyle, which who we'll see in a few minutes, that's eight and nine. And then there's somebody else. Well, maybe it's nine students. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. There should be somebody else, but maybe it's nine students. I'll have to double check the count at some point. So now we need to go back to the entrance hall. Because we've got a boss fight coming up. And how does this game introduce you to boss fights? By explaining how to do them. So before we go and see little Malfoy. Because I'm sure he might move if we don't go to him straight away. Let's just go to the great foyer. See if there's anything worth noting in here. Oh yep, yeah, okay. There's actually quite a few things. Watch out for the suits of armour. I think Peeves has been at work. I hope I never meet one. You hope you never meet a suit of armour? I'm not quite sure what you mean. But anyway, let's uh, go through. Oh yeah, we got a bit of a puzzle here. Okay, so let's just climb on the tables, get the uh, get what we need and go. And not get hit by these guys because we can lose some health. And hopefully not overshoot the jumps. Okay, let's that's that one done. Thankfully we didn't lose any health there. Here's a bookcase that we can go through. And this part is actually turning out to be incredibly long. I didn't realise it was going to be at least an hour, but... Help me, Harry! Some nasty Slytherin student has charmed all of my chocolate frogs, pumpkins and cauldrons into the air! Please help me to get them back by using your knockback chunks to bring them down. Not a problem. I've literally been taught how to do this. This is what I was designed for. I am the chosen one who's doing very badly right now. There we go, we actually hit something. I'm failing at a game designed for kids. Because that's my duty. That was terrible aim. Let's try that again. I think some of these items can continue to spawn even after you've defeated them. Like the pumpkin there. 
Come on, I need a chocolate frog. Give me a chocolate frog game. Give me a chocolate frog. There we go. Not quite sure why you couldn't have done this yourself. Here, have my famous witches and wizards card as a reward. Oh, now you're talking my language. That's what I want to see. Because this game is actually quite evil. Because in order to get 100%... Cornelius Agrippa. Yeah, why not? Let's view him. In order to get 100% in this game, you have to get every single Witches and Wizards card. And I've never been able to do that for a number of reasons. Cornelius Agrippa. Celebrated wizard imprisoned by muggles for his writings. Okay. Was that literally all there was about him? Nothing else? You know, what did he write about specifically? The game never tells you. So, as I was saying, this, uh, I've never got 100% in this game because it's incredibly difficult to do so because of one specific area. And I'm not going to promise to get 100% in this game because that's a lot of pressure to put, especially on a game this old. And I don't think I can really brag about getting 100% on this game, if I ever did. So I'm not going to do it. I will do my best, but I can't promise anything. So who's this meant to be? Salazar Slytherin. Right. I'll look at this guy. Well, I say this guy. I'll look at Salazar Slytherin. And then after that, we're not going to look at any more cards for the rest of the playthrough until the end of the game. Because otherwise we'll be padding the parts out unneedlessly. Salazar Slytherin. Medieval. Dates unknown. Co-founder of Hogwarts. Gave his name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. Yeah, they lit... That's literally it. They couldn't say anything more interesting than that. I suppose, you know, they can't really say about him being Voldemort's ancestor at this point, but still. Doesn't really give you much to go on. Okay, we're not going to go to Gryffindor Tower yet. And then there's just one more area to visit, and then we can go and see Malfoy if he's still there. I think we're actually very close to getting all the uh, Bertie Bots every flavour beans we need. So let's go through here. Get what we need. This area is delightfully simple. You just get the three you need. We just need ten more. Yellow Bertie Bots every flavour beans. And then we can go and see Malfoy. Why not? If he's still there, we got nothing else better to do. Hello, Malfoy. Well, well, Potter, we meet again. Having a tour of the castle, are we? This is as far as you'll be going. You won't get past me, no matter how hard you try. Trapped in a big scary castle, eh? Oh dear, I think Potter is going to cry. Malfoy is so savage in this game, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, can I just point out a few things about this plan, Malfoy? That one, you're not a teacher. Two, the moment a teacher comes along, they'll tell you to bugger off, they'll deduct house points from you, and they'll make you look like a bit of a tit. So your plan to keep Harry trapped in a big castle is completely and utterly stupid and I can't believe I never realised that until I played this game again. Because when I was a kid I took this incredibly seriously and I was like bloody hell Malfoy really means it I shouldn't mess with him. You know he, the guy's crazy man. Don't want to don't want to get on the wrong side of him. But no he's given up really pointless threats like does he not know where he is? He's in a school all it takes is like Filch or McGonagall to come along and be like you're being a prat, Malfoy. Ten points from Slytherin. Or an older student to come along and be like, yeah, you're being a prat. Get out of the way. And this area is lagging a bit for some reason, but whatever. So you can get a few more um, every flavour beans in here. We're, oh, don't jump. Thank you. Um, we're two off. Getting all 50. Fortunately, I know where to get the remaining two. 
we can't go in the fire so we can't burn ourselves and here's where all the house points are totaled up the great hall itself is actually quite a nice looking area it's just incredibly small like remember the scale of how big the great hall was in both the books and the films and then because of the playstation's limitations it looks like this this looks like it could only sit about 10 students per house maybe maybe 20 if we're being generous i know, I know i'm i'm ripping into a 17 year old game at this point but it is something i just find quite interesting so i'm gonna get the last two or however many it is bertie bots every flavor beans i need Because you do get some good stuff if you find them all. So one. Oh, we can. We'll just pick all these up. Why not? We're probably not allowed to explore the dungeons yet, but let's see if we can anyway. And any extras you get, they don't add anything. They just. They're just there for collectors' sake. Mr. Potter, your celebrity status does not grant you snooping rights. A sloth brain has gone missing from my classroom. No potions lessened until it is returned. Oh, Jesus Christ, you're a teacher. Just alter your lesson plans. The dungeons are closed until the sloth brain is returned. Oh, so basically Snape's going on strike because he doesn't have one object. Stop pestering me, Potter. Stop pestering me, Potter. Is, he, is that all he's going to say now? Stop pestering me, Potter. Sorry, one more time and then I'll go. Stop pestering me, Potter. And yeah, we can't go through. So yeah, Snape is Snape is incredibly stupid in this game. He's incredibly smart in the books and the films, but for some reason in this game he's a bit of a dense idiot. And I find that incredibly out of character for him, but it's so funny. And I just love the fact he's striking because he hasn't got one object for one class. It's it's so ridiculous. Okay then, Malfoy, before we deal with you, I want to get my reward from fred and george so let's do that and this is where the game eventually it's going to open up a little bit more once we've dealt with malfoy you do kind of get a little bit more freedom but it's not much Caput Draconis. and that's what i mean this game is it's kind of a false sandbox it gives the illusion of being open world and free but in actuality you're scripted by a very linear sequence that you Thanks have to do Ewoks flavor beans the password for the portrait of the old posh baron is fizzy pop hope you find the portrait it'll be worth it see you around come they don't even tell you where it is that's rude there we go that's fred and george dealt with so let's go get our reward Now, because there's four colours of every flavour beans, there are four rewards you can get for this. So, I'm trying to remember what we get here. I think it might be the Nimbus 2000. Hello, random portrait. Fizzy pop. Well done, young sir. That's the correct password. Let's see if I can get these old hinges working. Yes, let's see if I can get these old hinges working. There's there's a lot of puns in this game. Yeah, it's the Nimbus 2000. In a very Gryffindor-themed room. And it's only slightly better than the broomstick you used previously, so I don't know why they make such a big deal about it, but whatever. And what does the portrait have to say now? It's you again, young sir. All that opening and closing has made me feel a bit unhinged. Cheerio now. Will you stop doing door puns? It's you again, young sir. All okay, fine, you just say the same thing again. So his purpose is now fulfilled 
Malfoy, have you decided to not be a prat and are you going to move? Oh, boo-hoo! Potter can't get out of the castle. Go back to the muggles, Potter. You hardly belong in the company of wizards like me. Malfoy is so savage, but you've kind of forgotten something. If you want me to go back to the muggles, surely you should get out of my bloody way so I can get back to them. Anyway, to deal with this, we just do... Apart from telling a teacher that Malfoy's being a dickhead, we do this. Wingardium Leviosa! It's a good thing we went to the charms class, because if we had gone to anywhere else, we would have been screwed and Malfoy would have won. He would have won in his dastardly plot. Leviosa. And we would have gone home and cried. And here is the first boss battle of the entire game. I'm not quite sure why it needs to reload the area we're in, but it's going to do it anyway. Ow! Time for a lesson, Potter. Let me teach you about wizard crackers. This guy is the worst Bond villain ever. You're not leaving this castle until I have revenge. What, just for opening a door? You take this way too seriously, dude. Okay, so what you have to do... Let's pick the crackers up and throw them back at him. And I love how Malfoy's face looks in the uh, health bar. It just looks so pixelated. And he's just going to stand there and take three attacks in a row. Crab, take care of this upstart. Now, Potter, I'll give you a taste of my super wizard crackers. <laughs> super wizard crackers? It's like, it's like the Super Nintendo compared to the Nintendo Entertainment mm. System. What the hell was that noise, Crab? And why wouldn't you have just started with him? Like, why did you just start off on your own, Malfoy? So now we have to dodge all of Malfoy's attacks whilst throwing the regular crackers back at him. And, uh, yeah, we're not doing very well, so I'm going to wait until Malfoy throws another one. This boss battle is incredibly easy. It's very unlikely you will die here. I don't recall ever dying at this point. Oh, thank you for that. But again, Jeremy Soul's score really sells this and makes it into an epic battle of all proportions. I think I actually hurt Crab then instead of Malfoy, which is unintentional, but we'll roll with it. If you don't pick the crackers up in time, they explode and they can hurt you. Crab, you idiot! You're supposed to protect me! Goyle, get in here! Now we'll show this twit who the real wizards are! Yes, these three first year students are the real wizards. <laughs> okay, so now we've got two lots of crackers coming along. And we just do the exact same thing again. Until Malfoy gives up. Because no, nobody dies in this game. It's a very happy friendly game. Well, there will be one death eventually, or maybe two, but for now, nobody's going to die. And what? There you go, I lost some health. Go me. Malfoy, will you stop doing your weird jig type move, and I want to get rid of you. There we go. Last you, Potter. Next time you won't be so lucky. Looks like Team Malfoy's blasting off again. Oh, this bit's good. That single sequence is one of the wittiest aspects of this entire game. It's very silent movie comedy-esque. It's actually ingenious. Oh, the developers are really onto something when they scripted that. Meanwhile, the House Point hourglasses are slowly filling up. Awesome. I wonder who's winning. Because we've only done, what, half a day of term so far? And it's been an action-packed first day. Ravenclaw. Yeah, respectable. 67 points. Not bad. Would have expected more, considering they're supposed to be the brainiest. Hufflepuff. Wow, Hufflepuff. Doing better than Ravenclaw, as if. They're my house, by the way, Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Yeah, 99. Not bad. Not bad. I think I got one more point than that. Or maybe six. I can't remember. Gryffindor. 
Oh no, we got like 16 more points. <laughs> Gryffindor are in the lead on house points. Will Slytherin hold the house cup for a seventh consecutive year? Terms only just started. We literally do not know. But judging by that, we'll win. Now this is where I'd like to end, but unfortunately we're into another scripted sequence that we have to do. So I can't end the part here just yet, because this would be a nice place to finish off. But we've got a few things we need to do first. Hello Harry, it's me, Hagrid. Good to see you. These are the Hogwarts Castle grounds and I'm the gamekeeper, of course. You'll need to attend your herbology class. Professor Sprout's in the greenhouse waiting for you. Come round my hut later for tea. I've something to ask you. My hut's in the grounds. Okay. So unfortunately we're scripted to actually go to the herbology class at this point, so we can't save, which is what I would have liked to have done. But alas, we'll play this bit. Because we might as well. So it's going to be just over an hour. Now this bit is actually easier than the first um, class puzzle. Because all you have to do is literally just move all this and you're done. It's that simple. I'm not quite sure why this was considered more difficult than the charms one. But, you know, maybe some, maybe the developers thought people couldn't hold down Flipendo very well. Who knows? Because I, I would have said the jumping platforming was more difficult than this. And we're going to cheat. We're going to climb the second one. And we're going to jump up here. Hello, Professor Sprout. Harry Potter, I presume. Welcome to Herbology. You're just in time. Good day, students. I'm Professor Sprout. Right, let's learn how to cast an incendio spell. Watch my wand move around the screen and press the symbols it points to. Oh, you get the idea. Okay, you have to do this every single time, time you go to class. Incendio spell. That's the ticket. Now let's start the lesson. Get ready. That was good. Oh, and all these teachers say the exact same line. It's almost as if they devise this as their plan for the year. Perfect. Most impressive. Now try this one. I sometimes screw up on this, if I remember correctly, but today, no. That was good. If you're not concentrating, Excellent. it's very easy to slip up and then the teachers have slightly Perfect. different lines of dialogue. Well done. You've mastered the incendio spell. Now follow me to learn how to use the incendio spell. You can make a drinking game out of how many times you say incendio. Let's try the incendio spell to wither a bouncing bulb. Use your wand on the bouncing bulb by the door. Hit the correct symbols and you'll build up enough spell power to affect the bulb. Okay, that seems reasonable. Let's just eat all these chocolate frogs for no reason whatsoever, unless if we lost loads of health with Malfoy for whatever reason. Incendio! And this is relatively simple. Just press the respective buttons. It gets a little faster. Five points to Gryffindor. But otherwise, it's straightforward. And we're done. Right, with that, I think I'm going to leave it there because I've played this for over an hour and it's been a lot of fun. I will carry on with this later on another day. But for now, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.